What's good guys, it's your boy Blacklining4547 and today I present to you another video of the series How Things Work. Let's go ahead and get started. May I have your attention please? May I have your attention please? There has been a fire alarm reported in the building. There has been a fire alarm reported in the building. Please proceed to the stairways and exit the building. Alright, so today's topic will be on smoke detectors. But before I go in that, to, into this video any, uh, any further, uh, let me go ahead and explain to you what's going on with the next system test. Um, I already have all the devices up on the system except for the LCD ADF enunciator um, because it is it has been very difficult to find the proper uh, back box for it. Um, which is, like I said, is another disadvantage of the LCD ADF versus the ANN80. Um, the ANN80, you can literally just mount it directly to the drywall, but um, it also mounts on a single gang back box, a double gang back box, and a three gang. Um, so, you know, it's this back box is not uh, usually in your um, hardware stores such as you know Lowe's and uh, Home Depot things like that, and, um, you know, luckily, I found this back box, that I think it will work, for, um, at a electrical supply store, um, in my local area, um, for a decent price, for, like, 12 bucks or something like that, which is, you know, another reason, you know, you know, the hold up is the hold up, you know what I'm saying, because trying to find the right back box at the right price, too, um, I'm not really willing to spend 30 bucks on a back box alone. I think that's kind of expensive for a back box. So, you know what I'm saying? So, um, unless, you know, I buy multiple of them, but for just for one back box, eh, I don't think so. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, so once I do get that back box, so I'll mount it up, wire it up and I'll produce that system test. I'll upload that system test and get that video ready for you guys um my second thing is my quarter is ending for college soon so i gotta make sure i stay strong in that and also in five weeks um my cross country season will be officially starting and um you know that's going to be another reason for you know um slower you know uploads and things like that um and yeah so without further ado Let's go ahead and get into smoke detectors, okay? So, there's two types out there, okay? Ionization, photoelectric. Photoelectric is the most common one that you'll see. Um, and then ionization is basically, you know, in the old days. So, this is modern technology, older technology, basically. So, ionizations respond... Or, I'm sorry, photoelectric uh, smoke detectors will respond better at slow smoldering fires. Fires that do not produce a lot of smoke off the jump, off the rip. And ionization is basically the opposite of that. It will respond to uh, fast burning fires, uh, fires that produce a lot of smoke off the jump, off the rip. Alright, so... Yeah, but, you know, they work uh, differently. So, if we pop the head off, first of all, both of these are two-wire. And most of these detectors are two-wire anyways. Um, and they're conventional, by the way. They're not addressable, obviously. So, if you look at the head of this detector, um, this is basically a SIF-24F smoke detector. Uh, rebranded by Huchiki and things like that. Right here, if you look at this line, it says contains radioactive material. Um, so in here, there's radioactive material. Um, so what will happen is, and unfortunately, I can't really access the chamber, um, the smoke chamber where the smoke particles enter. Um, but there's radioactive material in here. And um, once the, you know, smoke particles enter this chamber, um, um, there will be a reaction with the radioactive material, and then once that material gets to a certain point, then it will 
set this detector off and then it will short the zone you know short the wires on here and on that zone that this detector is on and that will initiate a fire alarm on the main control panel and so yeah that's about it for this detector i can't really tell you much because i can't really access uh the chamber but i can on this detector so let me go ahead and do that all right so this is the inside of the smoke chamber of a full electric smoke detector so right here if you look real close that looks like an LED, but that's actually an infrared sensor. It's basically a diode that senses a beam of light. So we have an LED right here that uh, shoots across here, okay? Uh, so notice that we have all these like little angles right here. Um, so this, this is what happens. Once smoke particles enter, and by the way, this, the particles that enter in here has to be a certain density. And the reason why is for like natural sunlight, right? And you have this like mounted up against a window, right? Um, you don't want this false alarming uh, and having the detector think it's, you know, smoke when it's really just the natural light, right? So they, you know, obviously made it so this only reacts to a certain density of, you know, smoke so that you know, whether there's natural light or dust or things like that accumulate onto the detector that it doesn't false alarm easily. You know what I'm saying? So right here, uh, we have an LED that shoots right here. And here's another LED. This will tell you the status of the detector. Um, this will blink periodically saying that there's power to the detector. And once this turns solid, that means the detector turns, um, went into uh, alarm and things like that. So that will show you the status of the detector, uh, as you guys know of. So as I said for the fir fourth time or so, um, there's an LED right here um, that shoots a beam right here. And what will happen is when those smoke particles start entering this chamber, um, and by the way, this is a steady light right here. So once it starts entering this chamber, um, it will break this beam of light and this light will start dispersing around in this chamber then once that light starts hit uh, hits a certain angle that angle will that beam of light will then hit into the infrared sensor and that will um you know obviously change the value of the infrared infrared sensor and then once that happens then that will uh trigger the smoke detector and then it will once again short the zone that this detector is on. And then the fire alarm control panel will initiate a fire alarm. So that's how a uh, full electric detectors work. Um, like I said, the more, the more, uh, the more, uh, what's it called? And by the way, um, these detectors are a lot more practical because obviously having radioactive material, you just have to replace the detector as a whole. Um, when it gets dirty or something like that, or, you know, eventually the radioactive material will start wearing out and uh, it'll start getting less and less and less every time this detector activates to the point that, you know, that the detector just won't work anymore and you just have to replace the detector as a whole. Um, whereas, you know, if this gets dirty or something, like I said, where I have it, you can just pop the cover off you know, get some compressed air, you know, give it a th thorough clean out, and then, you know, pop the covers back on, which I'll do right now. And then line this up, line the guard up with the smoke to, boom, and then boom. It was back, all back together. So, yeah, so... Yeah, guys, so, and then once again, if you look at these Farlight uh, S355Ts, um, if you actually go to the panel, um, like I said, those detectors are uh, not only addressable, but they're also photoelectric detectors. Um, so if you look at the detector in my room, as you can see, if you scroll down, and I've shown this before, but um, 
being an addressable system and since the panel communicates with every point on this system um and oh yeah and by the way just a heads up now all these devices are actually uh, assigned to a certain zone by the way which i'll talk about in next test but as you can see there's a uh a chamber value um so right now it's at 1335 um, I do not know the thresholds of a trouble and alarm, um, but, you know, or actually maintenance, maintenance, as you can see, there's a maintenance LED, which will usually come on when there's a dirty detector. And then you just, like I said, you have to pop that head off and uh, just give it a thorough clean. And usually that will just clear like that. But, um. Obviously, you know, when the smoke particles enters the chamber of the detector, it will change this chamber value. And like I said, since this is on light speed, it basically updates in real time. Um, and then, when you know, once this uh, value gets to a certain threshold, then that will initiate a fire alarm as well. So, so yeah, guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video hope um hopefully this was helpful for uh, you know your understanding of how smoke detectors work um and what types of smoke detectors there are and how they work and you know what this where purpose are so other than that um that will be the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed this is your boy black lighting 4547 and i'm out this piece